our second master class in a series of three uh, for our 23rd year. Again, a hand for that. <laughs> that's, that's, the, that's the afternoon spirit. Uh, and uh, today we're, we're going to... Uh, does anybody know what, what it is saying? Like how to play softly, yes. not softly as, as the morning sun, or softly. Uh, not like that, no. <laughs> uh, we didn't get to it yesterday because we got involved in some other stuff. Uh, so we'll, we'll do it today. Um, okay, uh, I'm going to ask uh, Jean, come up and sit here and perform for us the world's softest piece. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's good, that's an episode. You know, save, 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 save it for tonight. Save it for tonight. As you notice, her silence, if you were listening, and I hope you were, as you notice her silence, uh, I heard a lot of stuff. Didn't you? Yeah. Uh, uh, I, heard, I heard the entire, I heard the room. I heard the blood rushing out uh, I heard the blood rushing to her ears. Uh, you hear your inner, you hear your inner demons. Uh, actually, you really, really hear a lot. The uh, John Cage Four Minutes and Thirty Three Seconds, which she played an excerpt of, uh, was written in the nineteen fifties, and uh, and it's been performed in, in universities all over in concerts. It's it's now standard repertoire in contemporary music. I've seen it done in so many different ways, including conducted. Uh, done very, very seriously, or, or I even heard it done as a joke. Uh, and so, there you have it. Um, the 4 minutes and 33 seconds uh, was originally written for the uh, Maverick Festival at Woodstock. And that was one of the first uh, music festivals in New York, summer music festivals. And it still exists today, and it, it exists in an old shed far in the woods of Woodstock. And, uh, and I've played there, and it is so alive with, with nature sounds that sometimes it gets in the way of the music. And so the commission of the John Cage piece was to, do, you know, uh, was to write a piece for that particular festival, that shed. So obviously he wrote a, he wrote a silent piece where you sat there and you heard like nature like you, never, like you never believed. So over the years, it's been taken out of that context and performed at the, as the ultimate zen, you know, zen piece. No reason why it shouldn't be. Uh, and so it went into other contexts and so forth. But the original intent was for people to sit there and listen to the, uh, to the woodchucks and the crickets and to, to the nature, which, which uh, you know, I, performing there, actually, sometimes you would compete with it. Uh, it, it was that alive. <laughs> Occasionally, you even, even saw a bear going by. Uh, uh, it was so embedded in the, in the nature. Uh, so uh, let's, uh, let's move on. We're going to learn to play softly today. Uh, so many uh, accordionists play, uh, play, play too loud. Um, and that goes for all of us. And sometimes you have to. You know, when you're outdoors, and uh, if you're in a park, or something like that, you have to play loud. When I was a kid, uh, even up to 16 years old, I played in, uh, we, strip malls were big then, with shoe stores and so forth, and I opened up many of them. Uh, <laughs> and you know, strip malls and uh, not strip clubs. Well, a few of them too, but, but uh, 
uh, for, the, for, for the most part, strip malls, you know, dial shoes. And, and I, even, I even remember playing uh, for this, this, this beverage they were selling called Team, that T-E-E-M, that, -E -E that Coca-Cola was putting out to compete with 7-Up. And so I was playing as they were trying to sell, give out free teams. And, and, uh, and the thing they asked me to play, because it was popular then in the early, early 1960s, was more. <laughs> more than the greatest love the world. Oh, yes. Yeah. From Mondo Pony. <laughs> and obviously, it really meant more and more team, please. You know, they wanted to get people to buy more and more team. So I pretty much had to play that over and over again. What did I learn from it? Well, at the very beginning, I was kind of, I was kind of embarrassed being a kid who thought he was kind of cool. Uh, but then all of a sudden, you, get a, you start getting a thick skin. And you, you, you realize, basically, that you're there, you're there to do a job and, 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 uh, and, and to do it well. And the next thing you know, you're, you kick into entertainment mode. And the next thing you know, you're, you're, having, uh, you're having a good time. The girls giving out the free teams were cute. <laughs> and uh, and it, was, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was kind of pleasant. And uh, so we, you know, we did that for a while. So all in all, what I'm trying to say is I still had to play loud. Uh, even with a microphone. It was a strip mall. People were driving their cars up and so forth. I had to play loud or else I, well, people couldn't figure out where I was and so forth. So, so the accordion playing softly is rarely talked about. Uh, I know in classical circles you have to go from loud to soft. But even to this very, very, very day, I rarely hear somebody really, really playing soft. Even some of the best players playing Bach and things of that nature when they do contrast and so forth. I really never heard her. I still to this day have not heard a real pianissimo. I've heard like a, you know, sort of a mezzo piano or something of that nature, but I never really heard a true, true, true pianissimo yet. And so, um, so this is the first year we're going to actually try and do a real, real, real pianissimo. We'll, maybe we'll get it down to three Ps, or maybe we'll get it down to four Ps. Um, so uh, there's also a new book on it, How to Play Softly, which is Zen Phrasing 2. Oh. Uh, <laughs> please get your copy. And it's written in very, 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 very light ink. So, <laughs> so you know full well that uh, you have to play softly. As a matter of fact, even the staff lines are you know, very, 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 very light. And so you're, you're playing softly uh, all the way. So please get your copy. Um, and so I need someone with an accordion on to come up and demonstrate and, or work with me as we, as we demonstrate this. Any volunteers? Uh, we have one already. <laughs> Jean Valonis. If you take a course in method acting, not Methodist acting, but method acting, uh, that was an old Tom Waits joke. They would always ask him, are you a meth uh, you know, method actor? And he'd say, no, I'm Catholic, my wife's a Methodist. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, sit here by the, so they see you uh, by the camera. Now, the interesting thing about playing softly or playing loud or playing anything or anything that we talk about here is we never, actually I don't think we ever in 23 years gave out an instruction manual. You know, how to do this, how to do that. We never gave an instruction manual. I suppose they're out there and if they, if they work for you, go out and get an instruction manual. I need one to work that, to work that video machine. Uh, so, if there's an instruction manual you, you need for something, by all means go get it, but we don't necessarily do that here. So, what, what playing softly or loud or anything is, first of all, starts with one, one word. Does anyone know what that word is? Cont what's that? Control. Control, that's a good word. That's a, you know, that, that's a good word to start with. Any other words? There's a few more, yes. Balance. Bellows, definitely bellows. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm going for the ultimate word. Onset. What's that? Onset. Like the beginning of the reed sounding. Um, that's definitely in there too. Um, uh, think not accordion. Think not accordion. 
you know, I, like I said yesterday, this is this actually what is not an accordion festival. Uh, we're, we're here because we're weird. Uh, it's all about conception, the concept. I mean, that, yeah, that's that, there, these are all these are all good answers. Uh, but there's there's one final answer I'm looking for. If anyone can come up with it, yes. Physics. Physics. What's that? Physics. Physics. Uh, physics definitely go into it. Okay. Intention. Uh, you have to have good intention. You know, bad intention will not get you there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, or, or maybe it will. Uh, and yeah, the word I'm looking for is projection. Uh, projection. How to how to project a sound. Whether it's a loud sound, a medium sound, or a soft sound. Yes? That's true because sometimes playing softly does not mean playing wand or swallowed up. No. Even when you're even when you're singing, if you're going to sing quietly, you don't want it to be like, oh, it still has to be somewhere out here. It's one of the hardest things I ever had to do. Uh, I think it's one of the hardest things for a musician to do, which is why I want to cover it today. It, you know, it takes as much energy to do that as it yeah. does to play something really, really, really loud. And so, so the first thing I'm going to ask Gene to do is I'm going to ask me to move back even more. Do and I turn the lights on? As, what's that? Do I turn those lights on? Like you uh, do we have lights that need to be turned on? Those lights. Do, do you want the fluorescent lights on? Let's turn them on. So you're not in shadow. Uh -huh. It'll help the uh, so picture if you want. What's the largest audience in the world? Somewhere in China. What's that? <laughs> Somewhere in China. All right. Somewhere in China, <laughs> where they have audiences of like, you know, 90,000 people, OK? And I'm going to be in that last seat. And the first thing. I'm going to ask you to do is to whisper something as softly as you can right now. Anything. Does anyone hear her? I heard something, but yeah. I couldn't tell you what it was. Yeah, I heard a little, yeah. I heard a little, uh, yeah. yeah. Now, I'm going to ask you to project it at least to the middle, to the middle of the space, the very same thing you were saying. Does anyone know what she said? I am listening. I am the walrus. No, just kidding. <laughs> Does anyone pick up any words? Okay, now. I want you to project it to this particular video camera. Okay, what did she say? I am a platypus. Say that again? I am a platypus. <laughs> okay, okay, it's starting to happen. It's starting to happen. <laughs> I am a platypus. And, uh, and, Good point. Now you're going to project it. <laughs> now you're going to project it to the last person in that ninety thousand seat auditorium. <clears throat> Does anyone hear her? I hear her loud and clear. 
Yeah, you just projected the softest sound to 90,000 people. Now, we're going to do the same thing with your accordion. That was really good, Jim. And, by the way, this is what, this, is, this isn't, as I said, this isn't just a lesson for accordions. You'll find that this is taught in many acting classes. As, and, and it was part of the, what they called the method, method acting. Uh, Lee Strasberg taught it. Uh, people like Marlon Brando were, were, were studying it. Uh, Marilyn Monroe studied it. It was popular. Uh, actually, it's still used, much more eclectic, but it's still used. And this was one of the exercises. It, fit, it works very, very, very well with musical instruments, and needless to say, we need it for the accordion. Now, I'm going to ask you to play any sound as softly as you can. But, now, let's, oh yeah, start out with playing any sound as softly as you can. Does anyone hear her? I heard it. I but heard I saw, it. Did you stop? You stopped. Yeah. I think the attack a little louder than the rest yeah. of it. Yeah. Yeah. But I heard the sustain. I heard it. Uh, I heard a little back here. Okay. Yeah, I heard a little back here. Now, again, let's do the process up to the video camera. Good. Okay. Let's do 
with Gina Hand. Let's give her a hand. Yeah, yeah. What's that girl? Yeah, yeah. You can go. Yeah. I mean, you can, yeah, you, you can, uh, you're, yeah, we're going to have another volunteer. Okay. Uh, what I want to do now, this is soft, and we're going to actually try it out, just as a summer mark. Uh, I need a volunteer uh, for another kind of soft. Do I have a volunteer for that? Uh, I think I have a volunteer with Denise. Uh, <laughs> put it in a you know, get it, get it accordion. What do you think, guys? Any comments? It's a nice song. Do you feel it losing out of the walls? <laughs> you feel the sound losing out of the walls? No. I'm not sure I got quite what you meant by losing. Oh, yeah, they are that way. Your bellows <laughs> are locked on the bottom, are they? <laughs> That's <laughs> 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 bellows. And now do a, <laughs> do a mental projection that projects from the sides and sort of in a circular motion and and perhaps ends up with me at the end. Not so much a straight line. And that's, you know, the, uh, the 
in your face school. <laughs> uh, but let's start with in your face and work from there. Let me give me a good in your face C minor chord. I get another one. I like that chord, by the way. But, you know, whatever. You know, whatever. <laughs> it's, uh, uh, sounds like a train. Uh, let's hear it again. And uh, it, it was 
it was one of the experiences. I said, you know something, this this has to be this has to be done on 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 accordions. And so that was uh, if you were here last year on Sunday, and she'll be back tomorrow. Lauren Flanagan, yeah. uh, the great the great opera diva, she'll be back tomorrow uh, with some of her girls, and we're going to do a piece of Doug Macafkas, and we're going to do some other things. And uh, that's going to be followed by Elliot Sharp, the entire opposite. And he's going to come in and do some, some unbelievable improvisations. Uh, and it's going to be a great contest. And one of her girls is going to improvise with us, uh, which is going to be really, really, really cool. And, uh, and, and she, she said the same thing. She's saying, you know, singing softly, because she has done a lot of opera, singing softly on an operatic stage and projecting out to the audience with the opera orchestra and so forth, and the chorus behind her was one of the hardest things she ever had to do in her life. Yes? She also talked about, what, what, however you were singing, that like how relaxed though she is. Like it's not out of a soft or loud, it's not out of a place of tension. Oh, oh, not, at, uh, not at all. I mean, you know, uh, uh, the only thing she tells me, I always wanted to know the secrets. <laughs> and, and the answer she gave was, maybe it's a Zen answer, right? And, and I asked her, you know, uh, how did you get into all this? And she said, because I was good at it. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and, and that, 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 was, that was her answer. And I just, I just never asked her any more questions. And, <laughs> and it was like, because. And, and, and it was probably a good answer. Uh, you know, we, all, we all get drawn to things. And we all end up that, that uh, the almighty above, or whatever you believe in, uh, distributes things the way the, the way he or she does, and we all have our we all have our we all have our gifts that we nurture and and, and, and develop. Uh, that's that's how I see it. So that, so that's our lesson today in playing softly. I'm not say, I'm not saying you don't have to work at it. Now, if it sounds simple to you, yes, it is. If the concept sounds simple, I hope it does. And if the concept sounds obvious, I hope it does even all the more. Uh, yes. Um, it's not n not simple, obvious. It's something to be worked on. One question with the accordion: when you start playing more than one reed, and you have a lot of us have older accordions where they don't all sound at the same level of air pressure. Any suggestions for how to find that balance point? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a clue because you know I'll tell you why. Not to be not not to be a wise not to be a wise guy. But you know the, you know the, you know what I'm talking yeah, about, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, every body type is different. Yes. Uh, number one, every accordion is different. Yes. And uh, every every psyche is different. So if you look for an instruction manual, it might make it might drive you crazy. Yeah. Uh, and with with what we did today. Um, you, with what you have, have to work with this until something, something comes up. And it usually does. And uh, it, it usually kind of does, or you have to change your brand of, you know, you have to change your brand. <laughs> it's like what he used to say to my dentist, you know, he asked me if my gums bled. And I said, only when I chew razor blades. And, and he, said, <laughs> he said, change your brand of razor blades. <laughs> Now this was Dr. Katz, and I have to give an anecdote about Dr. Katz, because when he was always, when he was drilling my teeth in Philadelphia, he would always say things like, "That Leonard Bernstein, he's a sham," and I'd be going, <laughs> said, "That Copeland doesn't know what he's doing," and I'm going, "Ah!" <laughs> you know, apparently, he was a musician who worked his way through college, you know, uh, uh, playing music. So I had moved to New York, and I went back to visiting my parents. And all of a sudden, in the Philadelphia Magazine, there was this picture of this new musical coming to town. And it was called We Take the Town, and it showed the composer and lyricist. It showed the composer at the pianist, his name was Harold Carr. And, and he looked like my dentist. <laughs> and sure enough, it said, he's also a Philadelphia dentist. So Harold Katz by day, Harold Carr by night. And so the musical opened at the Schubert Theater in Philadelphia 
Our accordion school was on the eighth floor. I actually heard it through the cracks. <laughs> it never got past previews. Uh, and I went to visit him, at, you know, when I was home for the summer, when I was going to school, I went to visit him and I said, hello, Dr. Carr, and he laughed. <laughs> and, uh, and I said, how's the musical going? And he said, Bill, I think I ruined it. And I said, ah. Oh. And he said, it's closed for revisions. Now, he tried this three times. He did something in the 50s also with Ethel Merman, and she apparently wanted him off the project. <laughs> but one song remained, and I didn't realize to this year that he wrote it. And maybe some of you remember it. I mean, this is un unbelievable. We belong to a mutual admiration society, my baby and me. We belong to <laughs> Does anyone remember, remember that? No. Uh, uh, no. Back in the 50s, it was a real big hit. Oh. And maybe he didn't want me to know he wrote that. <laughs> uh, but nonetheless, he probably didn't need to be a dentist on the royalties of that song. <laughs> so I'm sure he really liked, you know, he liked being a dentist. And so, uh, um, so he told me to change my brand of razor blades. Now, you might need to write accordion to, get, to give you that the softest sound. Uh, a, few, a, few of us have, a few of us have a number of accordions, which is going to bring us to our next talk. Uh, if you have an accordion that can't give you that, use one that can. Uh, or work with it, milk it, milk your instrument to see if it can. You, you gave me commentary on when I played gymnopedi or gymnopedi, so yeah. I like, played quieter, and I was playing in the microphone, but that was that oh, oh, with the rockers. After that, I went out and bought the white accordion that I played yesterday, which has more capacity for playing softly. For, for, for playing softly. So I don't know if you heard any difference. I, of course I did. Some, so you could Yeah, so I think, I hope that's answering your question. It is somewhat, you know, like, yeah. find the right answer. And, you know, uh, I, don't mean, I, don't mean, I don't mean to be obnoxious about, about this. I'm just, you know, <laughs> I'm sort of being realistic. Whenever I see an accordion, I see a different one, and that's what we, we're doing today. Not everybody, not everybody plays, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And now, since we're in this mode, and this is perfect to introduce my guest today, uh, Mr. Paul Stein. He's been with us for 23 years. Uh, he's, he's one of our Rock of Gibraltars. He's, a, uh, he's an advisor, uh, and not only that, uh, he's... He's really nice. <laughs> uh, and uh, so the question I was going to ask Paul, and you know, you know let's get out of the Truth in the matter, yeah, well, truth in the matter is, uh, don't move too far back because you're going to get shattered. Yeah. Uh, we we want to see your face. Oh, okay. <laughs> this, uh, is, this uh, isn't good. Well, you're going to look. You're going to look like the shadow. You know. Okay. You know I'll you're going to look like that. The shadow detective that had no radio. Okay. And uh, the shadow. And uh, now, I'm going to ask you a real, realistic question. Uh, we'll start. How many accordions do you own? Can I take the fifth? <laughs> <laughs> and the sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, the eleventh. If, if you include real accordions and not toy accordions, because I have some of those too. At the present time, last time I counted, I think I had eleven accordions. Okay. And are you going to get to that dozen? Uh, no, I'm trying. I'm thinking about downsizing. <laughs> actually. Okay. And my partner Elena is very uh, enthusiastic about the idea of my. <laughs> Downsizing <laughs> the number of accordions I have. All right. Uh, but why do I have so many accordions? There's a partial explanation. I never had any children, so these are my children, you know, and I didn't have to oh. put, put my children through college and all the expenses of having children, so oh, I, give me a break. I, I bought some. <laughs> 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 I'm going to use that excuse. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, now, with that, uh, with that, you know, okay, you know, your accordion children, and you know, uh, I, I know. Uh, but one of the things that the great, the great Italian composer Luciano Berio said when he was asked to write sequenza for a solo accordion, to sequenza 13, which I asked him to do back in 1965 uh, when he was a mentor of mine at, at 
Juilliard School, that few years when it went off on, when the school was avant-garde. Um, he, he eventually wrote it in 1995, 30 years later. And uh, finally, and then he said, when he wrote it, he said that he found that every accordion had its, had its own, had its own genetic, had its, had its own genetic quality. It was like a person. And so he didn't quite know what he was writing for. And he ended up writing, write, writing it rather, rather vague. He didn't use AAA notation or any particular notation. He sort of left a lot of it open, even for switching and realizing that it could be done on so many different, different kinds of accordions. And you're right about the children thing, <laughs> and, and, and uh, about that they, they all have their own personality and things of that nature. Yeah, it's true. And so the next question I'm asking, since we answered that, is with all that is, uh, how many, how many accordions do you think one really needs, or what do you, or the same question, uh, how many can we get to heaven without? You know, what, you know, what do we really need, or how many can we get to see the Lord without? Well, it, it all depends on what you do as an accordionist, as a performer. Um, after we had a discussion in your studio a couple of weeks ago, I came to the conclusion that when push came to shove, I only really needed four of those accordions. If you don't include the Cajun, you know, 10, 10 button accordion, which is totally different. I, I basically play, you know, piano accordion with a Studella bass. So I could, I could do everything I do at the level I want to do it, with the convenience I want to do it with four accordions. Uh, there, there's a bit of redundancy in my, uh, among my accordion children. <laughs> You're just enthusiastic about uh, uh, you know, buying up accordions, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm enth enthusiastic about the different types of accordion, what they do. In other words, I have, I don't think anyone else in this room has a, uh, a, a Titano, um, I can't even think of the name right now. I'm a tiger. 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 tiger, I have a tiger accordion. Um, and I have an unusual tiger. There are all different models of tigers. I have one that has 120 bass buttons, um, and it has seven switches in the right hand. They're relatively rare. Um, well, one thing about the Tiger is, is that uh, when Faith Defner put it out in the, like, in the 60s, uh, it, uh, it, did, you know, it, it, didn't, it didn't catch on. And, and probably because it was about 10 years too late. Uh, uh, it should have been put out uh, on, on the market around the time that, or maybe a few years after like the Fender uh, Telecaster and Stratocaster guitars were put out. Uh, uh, very, 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 uh, number, number one, the Tiger accordion was inexpensive. And in essence, what made the Fender Telecaster, or, or the Fender Stratocaster when it came out in 48, I believe, uh, what it made it, made it so popular was it was, it was thin, it was electric, it was phallic, uh, it cost 75 bucks, and it was uneven. And it was perfect for R&B, perfect for rockabilly, and then later on, rock and roll. It, uh, and and, and I'm, I'm, I, I can prove it. I started taking my accordion to the parties in 1956, thinking it would be a chip magnet, <laughs> and, and it wasn't. <laughs> Uh, and they would always go t towards the guitarist or, some, or the drummer. And, uh, and I realized basically the accordion was not an instrument that was attracting, attracting young gals. And when it first came on TV, when rock and roll started happening, uh, Bill Haley and the Comets using, singing Rock Around the Clock, Johnny Grande was playing an accordion. And their second appearance, he wasn't. Uh, he was playing electric organ, you know, uh, and, and uh, Connie Francis, uh, that singer uh, that was popular in the 50s and even in the 60s in those beach party movies, uh, she won the Arthur Godfrey Talent Scouts. That was like American Idol today. Uh, she was playing a white accordion and singing, and, and Arthur Godfrey took her aside afterwards and said, Connie, you have a great career ahead of you, but I have to give you one advice. What do you think that was? Get rid of the accordion. And by the way, he was right. He was right. It was going out of style. 
and perhaps due to Lawrence Welk, because uh, Lawrence Welk was presenting an image that was clean and, you know, white America and all that kind of thing that started happening after the, you know, a, you know af after the war. Uh, he, uh, everything that was uh, hunky-dory uh, and all before other things happened, you know, all before the Vietnam War, before civil rights, you know, this area where everything was bubbly <laughs> and, and the world was hunky-dory and yeah, we wanted to get to the moon and we loved pizza pie. And so Dean Martin sang, when the, moon hits your, when the moon hits your eyes like a big pizza pie, that's amore, you know. Um, and it was all about that. And Jackie Gleason would say, you know, I'm going to send you to the moon, but he really didn't mean it. <laughs> and all these things was happening. And so uh, Lawrence Welk stood for family values. And rock and roll was the first instrument the kids had that was their own, that was rebellious, that had that, that you know, that... That, that energy to it, and somehow the accordion didn't uh, didn't fit, fit. Also, in in post I, in post World War II Eisenhower America, we didn't want to, to show our ethnic roots. Uh, and so you, you strap an accordion on, and you're showing you know Schimmel. I strap an accordion on, and all of a sudden I'm German. And uh, or if someone Italian straps an accordion on, it's O oh, solo mio immediately. And so that image was right there. Now, if you drop that, which we were trying to do and just play accordion, we were trying to be Americans. And so there was a whole phase of uh, trying to get into that headspace of we were Americans first. And uh, so, and if we did, if we did anything ethnic, it was sort of detached. You know, let's all sing like the birdies sing, tweet, 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 tweet. Or, or let's sing like they do, the people of Paris, chante, chante, like they do. Or in a, in a restaurant, you know, in a coffee shop, let's be Italian and have spaghetti, you know. Uh, or let's dance like Mexicans at, you know, at, at the wedding, like, you know, let's do the Mexican hat dance, you know, and so forth. It has nothing to do with Mexico. Uh, oh, yeah. Why don't you ask me what factors People should consider in buying an accordion. <laughs> uh, I'm leading to that. Oh, okay. I'm leading to that. It ended up. It ended up with the accordion being in that funny place where ethnicity people were trying to get away from, and the ethnicity was in the air. People were sort of faking ethnicity, trying to be Americans, and that's where I was going. Sorry if I rambled a bit, uh, <laughs> but uh, I did. <laughs> um, I knew it was going somewhere. Yeah, okay. we know where it's going. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay, uh, we can t continue from there. Okay. Uh, now, you said you can take it down to about four accordions. Right. And uh, how about three? <laughs> no, I refuse. Uh -huh. It all depends. Back, back to the questions that I'd like to start with, is what factors you should consider in purchasing an accordion. And the first point I'd like to make about that is that there is no perfect accordion out there. Every single accordion is a compromise. It could be a compromise in the quality of the reeds, in the size of the keyboard, in the quality of the action, in the weight of the accordion, in the tuning of the accordion. And it can be a compromise. It could be perfect for one thing you do, but not perfect for something else you do. And therefore, that's why I feel I need a minimum of, of four accordions, because I, I have, looking around the room, I think I play more eclectically than, than most of the people in this room, uh, certainly. I mean, everywhere from occasionally a little classical, but not really, a lot of ethnic. I play in the street a lot with a, a street band that, that protests. Um, I do a lot of Jewish, I sing with the accordion, a lot of times I don't sing with the accordion. So there are better accordions for each of these purposes. In other words, I, I, I put this accordion on here, which I'm playing tonight, which is my most recent acquisition, and I sort of have a love-hate relationship with this accordion. I play it very often, I use it for, um, it's, a, it's a scandali, and I bought it used, I'm not going to play it right now. It's not time. But it has a, a tremendous amount built into it. 
And when I purchased this accordion, I wasn't looking for everything this has. It has built-in MIDI, and the only thing you need beyond this, aside from an amplifier, is a little brick that's a power supply. And it's, it has a wonderful, simplified MIDI system. It has built-in Sennheiser microphones, and it is a, a full musette accordion, three middle reeds and one bassoon reed. So with, that, uh, with, with those reeds, you can do a lot of different things. So those are some of the reasons I love it. Why do I not love it? Oh, and very important to me, one of the main factors in picking it up, I needed the F below C here in the, in the F sharp. Why did I need the F in the F sharp? Because I play with, with my bands, I play a lot, of, a lot of tunes in the key of D and in the key of D minor. And to make a triad down here is very, very helpful for what I do in, in the klezmer stuff and in, in other uh, folk rock protest songs. So I had had the, the accordion I purchased before I purchased this only went down to G. And I was really missing the F. Now that might seem like a trivial thing, but I, all of you, or most of you are accomplished enough musicians, you realize that can be a real problem if, if you're playing down here. So I saw this accordion used in an accordion store. I, I like, I, it has what I wanted. I, I wanted the full musette because I play all different styles of music. I can use the full, the full musette for, for Mexican. I can use the, uh, a shimmering musette, just two, two cent uh, middle reeds for, for French. Um, and, and there are many, many different variations on, on that, as well as I have a good, decent bassoon reed. One of the compromises on this accordion is, is that it doesn't have a chamber, but for certain things, most things, I don't need a chamber. I have another accordion at home, which is one of the four I, I, I say that I would need when I, when I do weddings, bar mitzvahs, whether it's the cocktail hour, the ceremony, or the reception, or on rare occasion, a procession. Um, having a really good dry tuned accordion with a chamber is very nice, if you can afford it, obviously. Uh, again, I spent money on accordions instead of other things. Um, so I have that accordion for that purpose, so I can have a full musette accordion, which many people avoid if they're just going to have one, one instrument, because it, it doesn't, for classical music and for new music, um, leave it aside that it, it's not a, a free bass accordion, which is all of the question. I don't have one of those. Um, that the, the, the full musette accordion is not as, as, as good for certain types of music that many people play most of the time yeah. and specialize in. Yeah. So, um, and another compromise in this accordion is that it doesn't have handmade reeds. It has hand-finished reeds. And you'll hear it tonight, it sounds pretty good, but it it's not, doesn't sound as well as, 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 as some other, uh, as good, I should say, as, as some other accordions that people have. So the questions you have to ask yourself in buying an accordion, it's sort of like buying a computer. A long time ago, when all the computers weren't so sophisticated at the same level, people would go out and buy computers and then find out that the software they wanted to run on the computer was beyond the capacity of the computer. It wasn't, wasn't right for that computer. So before, before you buy an accordion, you have to figure out, well, what are you going to use it for? And what are you going to use it for now? because over the course of your accordion career, your tastes may change, your specialties may change, your interests may change. So one thing you, uh, something you like now might not be something you will like later. And if you can afford to just add an accordion, maybe you'll keep the one that you bought initially and buy another one that has the, the tuning or the size or whatever that you don't have, or else if, if you really totally, mostly switching your specialty, you'll trade in this accordion and you'll, you'll, you'll get another one. Um, so th there, there are three main factors to think about in buying an accordion initially. What style of music are you going to play? And that will determine in part what kind of accordion you're getting. Two, your physical capacity. In other words, accordions vary Good, good accordions vary in weight from, I would say, about 9 pounds to around 30 pounds, okay? The 9 pound, there's one very good 9 pound accordion, and I happen to have one of those. What is it? It's a Honer Starlet. It's about 30, 35 years old. Um, it's 2 and 4, I believe. 
It has only 48 bass, so if you need, you know, it's not as flexible that way. But I find when I play with, with my bands, I rarely, and most people, I'm, some in disagreement with me if, if you disagree. I'm not talking about classical ensembles or something. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about bands that pay folk, rock, whatever. Um, that I rarely use my left hand. When you see me using my left hand, it's because I'm using it to cue my right hand, which we all do a lot in different ways. But I don't mic, if I'm playing in the band, I don't, I don't mic my left, my left hand. Um, so that I, at Honor Starlet, there are a number of people who play at accordions around the world, by the way. That's where I first saw it, who have Honor Starlets. And this, the street price of a used one now is about $7.95, I would say, when in good condition. Um, so anyhow, so you have to figure out what you're going to be using it for. And the wait a minute, if you're a concert accordionist and basically going to be sitting down, then you can have a, a 26 or 30 pound accordion without a problem. There's one brand, I won't mention it, but I'll say it's from the West Coast, so that narrows it down <laughs> a lot, that it, it has a reputation for being a very fine accordion. It has a reputation for being on the heavy side. So if you're, if you're and although they sell lighter models and, and smaller models nowadays. So if you're strolling, you don't want to get the 30 pound accordion. You want to aim for between 20 and 25. And that was one of the mistakes I made with this accordion, even though I love it and play it all the time, is that it's a little, I, I was looking for about a 20 pound accordion. And I found this one, it has a wonderful, incredible action. The best action that I've, I've, I've ever played. And it's very quiet action, as well as being easy to play. Um, but it, it's too heavy, I mean, for, for a lot of strolling, but also because it has, it's very balanced, and this is another factor, and I'll, I'll get to some factors if we have some time. Okay, in, in, in picking out accordions, that you can have accordions that look identical. They have the same number of keys in the right hand, the same number of buttons in the bass, the same number of reeds. And one of them can be a lot easier to play than the other. Uh, that about three factors what makes it easier to play. One is the action of the keyboard, the mechanical action, the mechanical action of the buttons also of the keyboard, there's more, more variation, I would say. Oh, there's variation of both. Two is the compression. Is it holding a lot of air, the bellows leaking a little? Because the, the, the tighter the bellows are in terms of not leaking air, the less you have to pump the bellows in that because the air is all going through the reeds. It's not, it's not leaking. And um, the, the third factor is the balance of it. And I didn't even, I had bought many accordions before I ever thought about balance. And it's not something you read about, really. But depending upon just the internal physics of the accordion, the, the density of the wood, in it, or, or plastic in less expensive cases, or aluminum, and the, if you've looked in the base mechanism, there are rods, and rods can be a little thicker in diameter, or a little thinner, although they tend to be about the same. But depending upon what's inside the accordion, it can be, excuse me, it can be easier to, to, to pump the bellows in and out. And it's something that, again, we don't usually think about, although maybe sometimes we notice when we try an accordion. So you have to think about how heavy the accordion is and, and, and what's, what, not just the weight, but the size of it, if you're going to be walking around or you know, move, moving around or playing for long periods of time. And last but not least, and this one you may have a little flexibility with, or you may not, is how much you're willing to spend. You know, we're all, we're all limited by, by our, our budgets. Um, but I would just urge you, if, if you are a committed accordionist, and everybody in this room I think is, and not someone who's just trying to figure out what the right instrument for, for him or her is, you should spend a little more than you think you should spend. And the reason you should spend a little more is, because, like with other instruments, and I know a little about the saxophone, I know a little about the guitar, I'm sure it's true of all instruments. If you get a cheap instrument, the action isn't as good. Even if it sounds, even if it sounds good, the action is, and if it's harder to play, you're not going to want to play it, you know. So, uh, an action, action is, is very important uh, in, in, in picking out an accordion. And one thing about action that people sometimes don't give enough, enough thought to, is noise, in the right hand especially, that even some very fine accordions, you hear more in the way of key clicks than you should hear. 
Now that, a, a good technician should be able to fix that. Maybe it's an older accordion and maybe the felt is dried up that's, that's cushioning it. There are different ways to, to, to fix that problem. But you will find, especially in older accordions, that very often there's more noise in, in the right hand than you would like. Although I have to say, I've heard you know, recordings or watched uh, YouTubes of some of the finest accordions you'll ever hear, and they're playing accordions where you hear the clicks in the right hand. You know, so it depends how much money you want to spend to have work done on your accordion and so on and so forth. But that's when, when you're picking out an accordion initially, that's one, one of the factors. And one thing I would say about picking out accordions, that you really want to pick it out in person. You know, there are hundreds, hundreds of accordions available on eBay. And hundreds, not hundreds, but there are a large number available on Reverb, if you know that musician's sale and auction site. And um, I have to say, I violated this rule on a number of occasions. I bought accordions on eBay, and I've, I've, I've inexpensive ones, not, not expensive ones. And I've been very fortunate. I judged the the um, the ratings of the seller and whether, whether the seller, you know, seemed to know accordions or not. And if you're going to buy an accordion on eBay, I would say, you know, and again, I violated this, but do as I say, not as I do. Um, only buy from a dealer that has a good reputation that you know something about. Um, and with a good return policy also. Because there's so much variation in accordions, just a little anecdote. Many years ago, I wanted to get a dry tuned 26 key, um, two and five, uh, a two and four rather accordion for, you know, playing at demonstrations and things like that, and singing along with. I thought the dry tone didn't work better for me to sing along with. And I went to what was then the largest accordion shop in, in New York City. It's not New York City anymore. And they had three of the identical make and model accordion with the specifications that I wanted. Um, and they were all honers, and they, they weren't high-end honers, they weren't low-end Hanukkahs. They, they were middle, you know, decent, decent honor accordions. And I had the opportunity to try all three. And they didn't sound exactly the same. They were very close. And the action wasn't exactly the same. It was very close. And since I had a choice of three, I was able to pick out one that, that I, I liked the best. And so, you know, there's so much handwork in a, a new accordion. And in a used accordion, there's all the handwork plus whatever anybody's done to, to, to fix it or modify it. So there's tremendous variation, even in accordions of the, of the same make and model. Does anybody have a, a, a horror story to tell about they bought an accordion and it wasn't what they thought it was or it didn't work out the way they thought it was supposed to? Anybody have a story about that? Not Sarah? a horror story, but just more like you can't, once you get your children, you can't like, you think, oh, I have to get rid of them. <laughs> so this is how this I got uh, from Liberty Bellows. I, I had a, I was going to be busking outside for a theater piece. I was part of the theater piece to like set the stage for this um, burlesque show outside. So I only had the Excel stairs. Like I don't want to play that outside. So I got for me for four hundred dollars a Honer Carmen um, from the '30s, and it was all it was played music all the time. And, this pretty, you know, shimmery white ivory and everything, and I got it and I played it. And it's like, like it, I mean, it's but, but very distinctive, but all like completely out of tune and like so unique. And I at first got it and I was like, this wasn't what I thought. Then the more I played it, it's like, I can't send this back. Where will I ever find another accordion that sounds like this? And now I, so that's one of the ones I still have. So well, we right. talked yesterday yeah. about uh, uh, about. Uh, if you, if you don't stand out, uh, uh, so maybe that's the instrument that helps you stand out and uh, and not be and not be boring, especially in a piece, especially if you're uh, going, to, going to open up a theater piece. Exactly, it was perfect for that, and it's, yeah. be it's beautiful, and it just it has totally unique sound. It's all it's all wood. It was all made yeah. uh, by hand. I mean, not a very fancy accordion even at the time, but like. Ma mass produced, but not mass produced, like from the 30s sure. kind of Well, I'm, I'm glad you were in, in, <laughs> in telling your, your anecdote that you mentioned tuning, and the tuning ended up being fine for you. 
And that was like, it was very out of tune and oh, right. wonky key clicks, unlevel, right. key, you know, the whole thing, <laughs> but it's, you know, yeah. yeah. But, but tuning is another, is another criterion which you have to consider in buying an accordion, even with a new accordion, you know, although the overall quality of high quality new accordions tends to be pretty good in terms of tuning, but you can't rely on anything, you know, for sure. But especially in used accordions, that's one of the things that I don't like about this accordion that I love. In that when I when I purchased it, I thought, look at it, it looks brand new, right? Cosmetically, in the action and everything like that, I assumed it, and I was told that it was just, you know, a year or two old, something like that. It ends up that this accordion was, was about 10 years old when I bought it. It just had been very lightly used. But even an accordion that is lightly used, if it's sitting around for 10 years and not being used, not using an accordion is not a good thing for an accordion also. The tuning was not, there are a number of things that have to be tuned on this accordion. Um, it's, not, it's not in as good tune as I would like for the purposes for which I use it. So, and I didn't discover that till, till a while after, after, I, after I purchased it. So things to when you're looking at accordions at an accordion store, hopefully, and I, I, I would recommend definitely to patronize your local accordion stores. And the reason is, it's for, for selfish reasons as well as they're probably owned by nice people and you want their businesses to succeed and things like that, is that very few of us do any repairs on their own accordions. I do some on my accordions, but not, not anything really. I don't re-wax weed reeds. If a reed popped out, I, well, I might have some wax in them, but I don't know. But most of us don't, don't do any serious repairs on our accordions. So if you have a problem, especially if you have a problem today and you have a show or a concert two days, you want to have a local person who's a qualified technician who can fix your accordion. That you don't have to go two hours or 150 miles out of town to reach or you know, sending it through the mail. There are all sorts of issues with you know, sending accordions as well as expense that way. So, and also, if you, if you patronize your local accordion store, and the, the number has been shrinking in New York City, unfortunately, tr tremendously, um, you know, you'll be able to try out different different accordions when, when you go to purchase to purchase an accordion, and you don't have to wait for it to come in the mail and then find out there's something that you don't like about it. Um, some of the factors that you should consider when you're when you're purchasing an accordion are the first thing you should do before you do anything else. You don't have to you don't have to look at it. You don't have to touch it. Smell it. It's very important that the accordion not have an odd smell, because if it has an odd smell, it means that probably there was some water inside, some condensation or water, that there's some mildew or mold of some sort. And it's just about impossible to get rid of it, okay? You know, there are literally probably at least tens of thousands of people, and we know some of them in this room, our uncles, our aunts, our cousins, our grandparents, that have an accordion that they stored in the cellar or stored in the attic, and it just went bad from you know the, the, the humidity well, there. Well, Paul, I, I know one one person said that when they discovered that accordion in the attic, it remind, the smell remind, reminded them of their grand the grandmother's paprika soup. Uh, <laughs> that that you know, that it had a kind of a smell of vision to it. <laughs> and so, uh, but for the for the most part, for the most part, uh, you, you you need some sort of new car spray for those particular kinds of accordions. Do they have anything like that? <laughs> uh, you want to avoid them generally because it, 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 it's a real problem and it's not a solvable, it's not a solvable problem. Well, so. you have to smell it the whole time when you play it. If you don't like yeah, the smell well, it, too, I right? mean, it might even be... Um, you better, yeah, but you're your right, audience you may you smell like, it also. You better like that smell. Yeah. It's that bellows is just in your face, you're hugging it. You yeah. know, they're like, <laughs> and and re relating, relating to, your, to your audience, the appearance of the accordion is important. But more important in some situations than others, if you're strolling, it's absolutely critical because you're going to be within a foot or two or three or four of people and they're going to see your accordion. I have to put in a little plug for Bill and I did a workshop here at first in 2004. And based on that, I wrote an article which was published in uh, Accordions USA called The Ten. 
commandments of sprawling. The largest, one of the largest uh, accordion articles on, uh, on, uh, on, uh, on Google. It gets thousands of hits a year. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, uh, and, uh, and we, yeah. We reprise that, that yeah. seminar yeah. Once, once or twice since then. Uh, okay. But anyhow, one of the points that I make there, that if you're strolling, how your accordion looks as well as how, is, how you look is, is very important. So there are two issues in terms of how an accordion looks. One of them, are the letters falling off? Is the chrome all tarnished? Is, it, is, the, is the celluloid beat up? Okay. We all know what a beat up accordion looks like. Some of them are hanging on the walls in bars. Maybe even we own some of them, I don't know. Some of them are sold on junker, has junkers on eBay for decoration. But the second thing about the accordion, and I have to say this purpose, this is a pretty flashy accordion, okay? I actually, it was one of the things I didn't like about the accordion initially. I bought it in spite of it, and now I sort of like it because it stands out a little, especially when I'm playing at senior centers and street fairs and things like that. It's just, it, it, it's, it's a nice picture. But if you're playing at a sophisticated cocktail party or wedding or corporate affair, something like that, it really doesn't, it looks a little too ethnic, a little too campy, you know, for that sort of thing. So this is one of the reasons why I need to have at least one more accordion. Yeah, Paul, I, I, don't, I don't mean to interrupt you, but one, one of the things that I was trying to say in my own, my own rambling way is back then we were trying to, we were trying to avoid, we kept ethnicity at a distance. And we bought dry tuned accordions that had, you know, had very plain grills uh, to create, you know, to, you know, to create that sophisticated, that sophisticated dry sound. We tried to get work in cocktail lounges even at a very young age, and so forth. And so, what Paul's saying, there might be a time to have an instrument for that. And for classical music, obviously, you want to fit in with a classical symphony orchestra with a tuxedos or tails and very, yeah. you know, very black. <laughs> you know? Yeah, you, yeah, you don't want to, uh, you, 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 yeah. Bob, I think you want to say something about yeah, that. Isn't that why we've seen uh, the disguised as right hand buttons to look like the piano? What's that? For a scene, I think right now I'm playing the ethnicity of Oh, yeah, very, very, very. The size of the buttons as looking like black and white keys. Yeah. Weren't the, weren't the, uh, uh, I, yeah, 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 I could be wrong, but weren't the, uh, weren't the white keys dummies almost? I'm not sure, but it looked like the piano keyboard. Yeah, yeah. It looked like he had two piano keyboards. Yeah. The thing that, yeah, yeah. In the, in the yeah. past five or ten years, I would say, the sort of eye-catching colors and flashy accordions have come back. A number of standard accordion brands are selling bright colors in all black instead of no white keys, all black. That's rather eye-catching. And all, all sorts of different um, colors and d designs in the celluloid on, on the accordion. There are no wooden accordions now that, you know, for issues of resonance and so on and so forth. But it's, it's, it's aesthetics as well that a number of major accordion companies are selling wooden accordions. So back, back to the factors, so smell, smell it first, okay? The action we spoke about, you know, play it, play it for a long time and see how it feels. Um, the clicks, listen for the clicks, depending upon what you're doing with it. If you're playing in a rock band or a, blue, uh, a blues band or something like that, maybe the clicks aren't gonna bother you at all. But once you've bought it and you have to take it to a technician to fix, maybe the clicks can be fixed at least ameliorate if not totally eliminate it. But it's gonna cost you, it's gonna cost you serious money. I mean, accordion work is, is very skilled work and you know, so it, it takes a long time and it takes a person who's, who's well trained to do it. Um, tuning, again, tuning you want it, if it's supposed to be a concert pitch, A440, you want it to be totally in tune at concert pitch. You don't want a few keys or many keys standing out being, you know, a few cents uh, or many cents uh, sharper and in many sense flat. All of the old ones, though, none of them are 440. They're 443. Yeah, they usually 440. They're usually sharp. Yeah. Sharp. Yeah. Yeah. And that has an advantage in that it makes them stand out a little yeah. in an ensemble. And I think that was that the original reasoning why they did that. Uh, well, um, uh, I only know from experience that my my instruments were a little high also, mm -hmm. and uh, when I go into an orchestra. I'm, I'm, I'm heard. I'm heard clearer. Right. Yeah. Uh, and 
And so, so in, in, that, in that respect, yeah, yeah. You wanted to say something? Yeah, well, I've okay. heard, um, well, I know that pump organs were up to even to like 446. Wow. Very, very sharp, just because there was no international standard until, mm -hmm. I don't know, the 40s or something. Okay. And then, um, and then also physics wise, the louder they play, the flatter it gets. Mm -hmm. So, if you're playing a big band, I guess, you know, you were going to play a louder, so maybe it was to temper it that way. Um, but also, yeah, it does stick out. But yeah, around the turn of the century, it definitely changed. So, uh, you know, I think 2000s onwards were typically the, the accordions, all the ones I've come across, I don't, standard is somewhere between 440 and 444, I would say. Is that other people's experience? Oh, That's yeah. the standard for accordions? Oh, I know. When I look at the string players, they always had to tune the one shot. Right. Mm -hmm. Most are 442, like from the 60s and before. Uh, but there's, there's, if they're handmade reeds, they tend to bend a little bit more, so they might be 444. Uh -huh. So you have to consider all of these factors. And again, I consider myself extremely knowledgeable. I used to hang out in the boarding store that my friend owned in Manhattan, and I'd see him take him apart, putting him back together. I know a lot about how accordions work. And then I went and bought an accordion and didn't think about all the things I'm saying that you absolutely should think about. You, know, you get, it's like purchasing anything. You get dazzled by what you like about it and you don't spend enough time thinking about what, you know, what, 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 might, be, what might be the matter with it. Um, before I forget, there's one book. I didn't bring it with me today, but uh, you can write it down. I recommend this book very, very highly. It, it covers everything we're talking about here and has additional information. The author is George, B-A-G-E-O-R-G, -E -E, George, I don't know if this is the right pronunciation, Bacich, B-A-C-H-I-C-H. -H. He's out on the West Coast, I believe. And he's an accordion aficionado and technician. And it's called Piano Accordions, colon, Owner's Manual, Owner Apostrophe S Manual and Buying Guide. And it's a, great, it's a great summary of everything you want to think about in, in buying an accordion at night. It's, it's available online from, from, several, from him directly and from se several other places. Um, one thing to consider in terms of price when you're buying an accordion is what's included. In other words, does it have straps? If it has really old straps, are they really usable straps? Or, and again, if the, if the straps look crummy, and if you're in a situation where you're scrolling and you want to look nice, you might want to replace the straps even if they're usable, if the leather is all uh, cracked and so on and so forth. Is the case included? Is it a hard case? Is it a soft case? Maybe if it comes with a hard case, you could ask the, the person, I'm assuming it's in an accordion store, you know, can, can I have a soft case instead of the hard case? Does it have a back pad? And I strongly recommend, I have one on all of my accordions, a back pad which protects the bellows from the buttons and pens in your pockets and things like that. And it makes it more comfortable to wear. And uh, any accordion shop should be able to find, have an appropriate size back pad, which I, I recommend installing snaps. You can also put it on with Velcro, um, with stick, stick on Velcro. So what, what comes with it is that included in the price. You want to, you want to find out um, do you have a trial period? In other words, can you try it for a week, two weeks, 30 days, and return the accordion if you, you decide that it doesn't suit, suit your purposes? And if you return it, do you only get a store credit, or can you get your money back? I mean, there are, you know, there are all sorts of considerations that way. I mean, people are accordion stores don't want people buying an accordion for a week, playing it out because they needed a, that accordion for a particular concert, <laughs> then bringing it back in a week with no, you know, at no cost to them, the accordions maybe, you know, a little, little more used and, and so on and so forth. Um, one thing I recommend if you're buying an accordion, uh, bring a friend with you, especially if you're not very experienced in purchasing accordions. Try to, try to bring a friend. I'll be happy to go with you or, you know, someone else in this room who's is experienced and more experienced than I am. <laughs> you know, just because it's good, it's good to have another set of ears and another set of, of, of fingers. 
And also someone who is not totally taken by the beautiful rhinestones, as maybe you are, or isn't so excited because this is a 37 key accordion. You find a lot more accordions that are that don't that have 34 keys and don't have the F. And you really wanted that F and that F sharp there. So that you know. So if you have someone else who might be a little more objective than you, and also as experienced, hopefully, or maybe more experienced than you, it, it, it's, it's good to get, get another opinion. Um, and, and back to the different size accordions, we haven't really focused on that. I'm a street musician a good part of the time, and I literally play in the street in, in marches and rallies and demonstrations. And my little honer starlet, which I mentioned before, is very good for that. It's so light. But on the other hand, it's not really loud enough a lot of the time. It depends what's going on in the street. So you have to think about, do you want to have microphones installed in the accordion? There's one very good external microphone that I have that I can switch with Velcro to various accordions. I recommend it highly. It's not sold very much in this country, but it, it works very nicely. And I ended up, I, I fell in love with the Hunter Starlet. I used it all the time. I use it in my band a lot. It has very sweet, very, very nice reeds. And, um, and if I'm playing with a band in any kind of a, a gig, you know, we have PA and so on and so forth. So you can hear it even in a rock band, it gets, you know, it gets amplified enough. But in the street, a lot of times I don't have any amplification. And I'm, you know, marching a lot, I don't want to have an amplifier with me. So I got a second vintage accordion that was two and I think four, it could be five, I forget. But and, and it, it, it cuts in the street, the reeds are quite good, um, and it's 34 keys, and it gives me more flexibility, it's, it's 72, 72 bass. So I, I, need those, I need those two, and then we'll go back to what, how many points can I justify? I mean, for, for what I do, I can I play in the street a lot, and I sometimes play for a real long period of time where I need a small accordion. And sometimes I have different, this is a whole other talk, which I can give some other time I've given. Um, you can, they're little, very small amplifiers that you can wear over your shoulder with a guitar strap or other strap that you can amplify these very small accordions that are very good if you're out in, in the street. Um, so I need the smallest one to be marching around a lot. I need the next one to cut better when I, I'm not going to be as tired and marching that many hours. I need this accordion with, with the full music tuning for all the different kinds of ethnic music that I do as well as standards. And, and Broadway, and I need uh, a more formal looking accordion that's dry tuned, that, um, and I have a beautiful vintage bell accordion, it's a very rare accordion, it's, um, I, we're not pushing any brands here, this, you can't even find this, so I can tell you what it is. They were, that was a very, very, very desired one in the 1950s. Yeah, but this particular accordion is rare among the, the bell accordions, it was made, I believe, because I have a Sonolo accordion also that's wet to me, no, 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 no. That, but it has three three reeds, and it's uh, so it has two middle reeds and a bassoon reed. One middle reed and the bassoon reed is in the chamber, and it has the I don't even know what you call it, but the extra lower set of uh, bass reeds. So it has a very wide range in the bass, and it's a great jazz accordion, um, and, and with a bassoon reed in, in the right hand in the chamber. Um, so those those are the four accordions, not including the Cajun accordion. That we're going to play Cajun music. It's much better than that. Yeah. Okay. So does anybody want to just tell any 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 good experience, bad experience they've had? Not mentioning any shops or, or anything brands, but and any an anecdote that, that comes to mind. Yeah, I bought a bunch of accordions off of eBay, and it's it's really hard to tell what you're going to get. Um, a lot of times it has some mechanical problems. Like uh, I'd say the worst and one of the most common is that they're rusted leaves, which unfortunately you can't really tune at all. Um, but a lot of times in the description they'll put, um, like, you know, I'm not a musician, but I, I know there's sound coming out, you know, it's like really vague kind of yeah. description. And you're like, well, all right. Yeah. And, um, you know, you end up just throwing away money. Yeah, that's a good point about the rusting keys, especially. They Often the rust sense. goes along with the smell, but not necessarily. Right, yeah, sometimes the smell can just be on the exterior. And, and you can also get rid of that smell sometimes uh, with a mix of alcohol and vinegar. Uh -huh. And combining that with just baking in the sun, uh, just airing it out. 
But once I ordered an accordion off eBay, and it didn't even come with any reads. <laughs> <laughs> and it didn't tell you in the description that it had no reads. So you just put that on your wall like art? Is that what you did? I thought I was able to send that. <laughs> yeah, and I guess they advertise there's a readless accordion, which they do <laughs> have now. They do have a readless accordion, so they could have fooled you with that. Oh, oh and definitely, like, if you're going to have something shipped, so get it from sure. Yeah. So, are Jason, you, are you going to play for us today? Um, I can, but yeah. I don't know. It's, it's okay. hard. So let me just sum up. Right. Sum up. Right. Sum up. Sum up. Okay. Okay. So when you're when you're purchasing an accordion, uh, first think about what kind of music you're going to use it for, and whether the, the tuning of the accordion, the appearance of the accordion, and the size of the accordion is is suitable for that kind of music. But then you have to think separately about the size of the accordion. If can you manage that size accordion for how you're going to use it? And you have to think about your budget. And I would urge you to. to it never hurts if you're serious about the accordion. Spend, borrow a little money on your credit card, spend a little more than you think because a, a better recording with a better action is going to be a lot more enjoyable and, and probably sound a little better also. That's one other thing. When you talked about balance, you meant like the physical weight, but also yeah. think about the balance of the sounds because that Excelsior Good. OO that I love, it's very, you can't just play the oboe reed over the left. Like it's very, very <laughs> unbalanced. So you're always playing like double reeds. So, um, the white one is a little better balanced, and you can't play the vi the one I was playing. You can play the violin, and you have more variety on either Good point. side. Sure. So. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. Thank you. Sir. Another balance. Okay, Paul, that was great. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to hear from Evan, and uh, tell us where you're from. Uh, uh, so I'm from Pennsylvania, uh, from Scranton, Pennsylvania, and. Um, I worked at Liberty Bellows in Philadelphia for about two years where I did um, an apprenticeship to learn to fix accordions. Mm -hmm. And uh, there I also, uh, you know, I bought and sold and, and helped a lot of clients. I know a lot about some of the issues that Paul talked about. Um, yeah, I mean, I would definitely recommend that anyone that's here, especially that is obviously taking it seriously as an instrument, uh, if you want to rely on this, and of course the return policy is that go to a store like, like Liberty Bellows. I also have a little workshop in Brooklyn called Brooklyn Bellows, uh, where you can try out instruments uh, to your liking. I do repairs as well. Um, you know, I, I can do both servicings and restorations, but uh, nowadays I'm tending to do just more spot tunings and you know adjustments of keyboard action or pad replacements, mechanisms. Adjustments. Um, so sometimes, yeah, you can get an accordion and there's just something small, like a, a stuck bass drum. Like you can get a really good deal, actually, you know, on Craigslist or something, of uh, something that just needs minimal work, and, and the turnaround can be quick, and you can save money, you know, or resell it at profit. Um, and then, yeah, there's other things like like rust, I mean, that or bad compression that you know you just can't really do much. Well, today we're going to hear you as a performer. And, and today you're going to hear me play. Uh, I had a dream last night. <laughs> I didn't know what to play at all. Okay. Well, let's hear but that. I, let's I, like, hear the dream. I like the avant garde kind of side of um, well, what I know your work is to be, Dr. Schimmel. And um, I had this dream that uh, I was like a surfer. I don't know. I was a <laughs> surfer or I was observing the surfer kind of uh, are all the elements and things. And, um, you know, riding the waves, and then, uh, you know, this, this, this sea kind of, like, at a moment became really choppy. And, uh, and then I kind of like, drifted out and followed the serpent, drifting out to the open sea, and kind of got lost, and, and then, uh, you know, just kind of just looking up at the sunset and the stars and stuff. And then this whale came and bit his leg off. <laughs> wow. And, uh, That's scared of it. Yeah. And then at that second, you know, like, uh, I, I heard the door of my apartment, like, close. Uh, and, like, I, you know, my roommate woke me up, so maybe this is the way to abruptly end. Uh, um, but yeah, I was going to, like, recreate the dream, but it's, it's just through some sounds and, and uh, kind of guided imagery and uh, song. Position. Well, you have our attention already. So. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I mean, it's not like anything really 
solidified yet, you know, it could be. But well, we do a lot of we do a lot of process work here. You know, works in progress. Oh, that's that's yes, why we this call this one's it, fresh. That's why we call it seminars. That's, that's, the, that's the idea.
It's just this voice thing that I always found to be like just kind of painful to listen to, painful to <laughs> to uh, yeah, just experience. No, it's a beautiful work. Beautiful work. Yeah, thank, uh, you. thank you for that. Thank you. Now uh, I'm going to uh, now I'm going to do something uh, which I think is long overdue. Uh, I and the American Accordionist Association is going to present an award to someone in this room. Uh, someone who has been involved in so many different ways uh, for 23 years. Uh, I you know one instance, you know, you know, I like to run things at our at our concerts like like clockwork. Uh, and I sometimes even 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 to a fault, you know, have, have players kind of run in and run out and another one come in. You know, I like that continuity. I just do. And I'm loosening up a bit. <laughs> uh, we're even allowing vowels now instead of at the end. Uh, <laughs> but nonetheless, I remember one situation where one of the one of the persons showed up too late and never did a sound check. And when they got out on stage, they wanted a microphone and so forth, and they stopped the show. Uh, and the show was stopped, but all of a sudden, the, the person we're giving an award to, all of a sudden, he made a microphone appear. And, and everything went clockwork. And he's been helping us around the clock with everything, not only his wonderful performances, but his, his attitude and his help. Uh, we're gonna present a merit, merit award today from the American Accordions Association to Paul Stein. Thank you.